the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ebro, Laura, and Rosenberg. Good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Um, we have a, I'm calling him a friend of the show. Our guy, Mo Ammer, joining us today. He's going to hold it down all weekend long. It already started. It's going to be at Caroline's all weekend long, not just Mo Ammer. Opening up, my brother, Cypher Sounds also. So you got Cypher Sounds and Mo Ammer at Caroline's all weekend long. Mo, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm doing really, really good. I'm, I'm blessed to be in New York. I'm excited to kick it off again after uh, – doing my special for Netflix. I always come back up here to rebuild and before I go on the road and it's uh it's the spot, man. It's the spot. You hear that, Laura? Do you hear that? You I hear know. that rich you hear that rich talk? <laughs> does, yeah. Laura, am I wrong or does something about Mo feel different this time around? It's not I smell a lot of money. He smells very rich. Even though this is virtual, I could see it. I could feel it. You know what I mean? I could I could hear it. <laughs> talk to us it. about the money, Mo. The, What's talk to us about on? the Netflix bags coming in. What's going on? You got TV shows, specials, Movies, what's happening, bro? Say that all praise be. Okay, I just got this money. All right, relax. <laughs> yeah, I got a Netflix series. Uh, well, I just dropped my special Muhammad in Texas on Netflix, and um, I'm in, currently in post production for my uh, sitcom, my single cam series that takes place in Houston. It's the first ever series to be filmed in Houston, which is wild. Uh, wow, that comes really? Out. Like, yeah, it's wild. Uh, unless you count Reba, but Reba was filmed in a studio in LA. <laughs> but it's not right, like right, that. Right. It's really, it's really a grounded comedy. It's um, it's almost like a two part movie. It's really uh, man, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, and also it's just uh, taking every ounce of energy from me. So that's what I've been working what's, on. So that Mo, comes what's out the series, in the fall. What's the series about exactly? Is it as a biographical? Yeah, it, the the series is very much in my DNA and my life story and my family story about, um, you know, leaving war in Kuwait and coming to Houston, Texas as refugees, basically following this Palestinian Arab family in Houston, Texas, that still don't have, still doesn't have their asylum paperwork. And I have to constantly work under the table, these horrible jobs that are under the table while trying to take care of my family and my autistic brother. And um, and also and also tell these great origin stories through flashback. So explaining where they come from, where wow. the first day, you know, fish out of water elements in Houston. So it's a lot of fun, man. It's been it's been pretty cathartic, just kind of telling these real <laughs> real stories. Some of them are some of them are pretty spot on. Some of them, you know, we fictionalize a little bit, but but it's been it's been quite an experience. It's exhausting, now, but really worth it. Being a being a forty year old. You know, Palestinian American man. Um, Why you gotta say it like that, bro? Well, let, me, let me finish. A, a, you know, name Muhammad. You know, um, who, who lived through America post nine eleven. Is it crazy to you to sort of see the positive reception that you're getting and sort of the welcoming I'm guessing you're getting from Hollywood people right now about wanting to tell your story? Is it something you ever imagined? <clears throat> yeah, I did. I, I really did. Um, you know, after 9-11, I was like, well, it's going to take longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was just one of those things that was just really annoying to me because I always saw it, um, this huge gaping hole in, in American culture, although that, you know, Arab countries are being invaded overseas, but usually when that happens, you start exporting everything they have. Uh, there's no, there's no, there's no coincidence that hummus is one of the, like the things right now, and and uh, the culture keeps popping off, and then eventually, you know, people are going to get curious about families or or you know etiquette or what they have. So I think that it was just a matter of time for sure for it to happen. I'm just curious because I've I've heard obviously. Uh... I've heard a lot of immigrant stories and it always baffles me and like how people end up in certain places, right? Like how did you and your family end up in Texas out of all places? <laughs> we got lost. You know what I mean? okay? Christopher Columbus was with us and you know, Muslims were horrible navigators. We get lost. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, my, I had, I had a, uh, you know, I had family there in Houston already. Okay. Uh, okay. So you, are, you guys already yeah. have peeps there. 
Okay, it was we one had, of those. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. We had people there, and it was just like Houston, Texas. Here we come. You know, it was one of those things. <laughs> you didn't really dream, have much right? time to think about it. You know, right, right, so, right, right. It's like, who do you have? Let's just go. You can't be like as a refugee fleeing war. Like, I don't know, Houston. It's really humid, you guys. It's, be- right, right, right. <laughs> Houston Hobby Airport is a mess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I guys, it's just like the Gulf. I heard Miami's way nicer. I mean, it's really right. affordable on the coast. Yeah, you know, can we just go? No, that's not. That's that. We just, we just, we just booked it. And my mom and my my uh, my father got rest his soul. I mean, they were amazing in that moment, and just to see them thinking so quickly. And like, I remember everything. I remember everything, what they did, what my mom did to get us out and what she had to, you know, go through to make sure to get some money out. It, it was really just you? like, wow. I was nine. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you were old enough to just have really, really clear memories of it all. Uh, what's, I remember everything. Mo, is, yeah. Mo, is Arabic your first language? Um, yeah, Arabic is my first language, but I learned English and Arabic at the same time. So my mm. father, my father and my mother were very you know, big on that. Uh, I went to a British English school when I first, when I, when I first started going to school. So I had a British, like a little bit of a British accent when I first came to the States and I was getting corrected constantly. I would embarrass myself on a regular basis on the playground and the kids would mess with me and I had no idea what they were doing. I just, they were just laughing at me constantly. Cause I would, I would, I would say things like, you know, you know, people would just say cat, you know, when you have a pet, I would say pussy. That's what I would say, a pussy cat. So kids would be like, do you have a pussy? I'd be like, yeah, I have a pussy, you know? And they'd be like, ah! <laughs> you know, they would just laugh. I'm like, why are they laughing? I don't get it. You know, like I was just this adorably Aww. lost kid. You know what I mean? It was really funny. Or I would walk up to my teacher and be like, Mrs. Trend, <laughs> do you have a rubber? And she'd be like, what? What are you talking about? And I'd be like, I made a mess on my paper. I need a rubber. And she's like, it's called eraser. We don't call it rubber. <laughs> yeah. you know, eraser. Like stuff like that. And then as you get myself. older, as you yeah. get older, you start kind of learning the culture and sort of like ingratiating yourself. And then I'm guessing it's hard because you get very Americanized, but your parents probably don't get as Americanized as you do. No, no, they don't. They don't. I mean, you know, I lost my father when I was 14. So my father was like really well traveled. And my mom too. They did a lot of travel. My dad was really ahead of the curve, man. He was a telecommunication engineer. Like he came from mm. nothing, a small village in, in Palestine. And man, he, he really did a lot. You know, he really did a lot. And if you saw Muhammad in Texas, you could just see that the encore that I did was really special because of what the technology that he introduced to the to the culture, his neighborhood, the village. Like he really he really was ahead of his time. It was really beautiful to see. Um and he was really advanced. So I, I don't know. I don't know honestly how he would feel about me doing stand. I know he would be so excited to see everything that's happening today. Um for sure. But my mom definitely, yeah. My mom is, you know, she's old school, but she also now really trusts me and understands the whole thing and and gets it. But I am too, man. I'm a little bit old school. You know what I mean? I like I like uh I like the old country and I like I'm even though I'm really progressive in my mind, I'm also just like grounded in that in that old culture. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I that's love it. that's that's the beautiful place to be is is progressive in thought, but still grounded and connected to what makes you you. Um yeah. do how much do Palestinian people and um Muslims Middle Eastern people come support your shows because, like, listen, you 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 happen to be from a really small place, you know. Shouts to Hassan Minaj, right, and Russell Peters. They're Indian. The crowd that comes out for them is gigantic. I mean, they have the their from their background is in the big one of the biggest countries in the world. You don't have that, but the people who are connected to Palestinian culture, I'm sure, are super connected to you. How much support do yeah. you get from that world? I get a lot of support from that. I mean, as far as like my audiences, they've been, they're extremely diverse. My audiences are wildly diverse. People are surprised by it. And I, and I, and it's kind of an irritant for me because I'm just, a, I'm a stand up comedian. You know, I'm not going up there speaking Arabic for an hour. I'm, I'm doing stand up. You know, it should be a diverse audience. Thankfully, it is. Uh, but also, you know, obviously, I'm in touch with my people when people come out and visit, of course. And it's not just Palestinians, it's just Arabs in general. You know, they come out 
and that's a pretty substantial population. But Arabs, you know, like we, you know, I enjoy those audiences too. Like I, I want everyone to come out and my shows are really, really diverse. Uh, I'm telling you, like sometimes it'll be like 50% Arab and then next thing you know, there's like two Arabs in the audience. You know what I mean? It's like from show to show. So it's just about like, that's what it's about for me. I think that's like the biggest win is when you have everybody there. Well, not only Mo Ammer, but also the great Saifa Sounds. Why why Saifa Sounds is your opener in, in New York City? I mean, he's a disgraced radio host. Yes. He does a terrible <laughs> podcast. What why why Saifa Sound? You know, it's just there's only so much ignoring of one human being can do. Right. The calls. I mean the calls, bro. Like right. over right. and over. You're just he's relentless. <laughs> no. So so you know, so man, the, this was me, just to shut him up. No, 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 I'm just playing. No, Saif, Saif easily is the best host ever. Easily, like, with his, with DJing, with humor, and it's just, like, he's really been working hard at it, man, at being a stand-up, and, and I applaud him for that, and he really wants to, like, get better and be amazing at it, and he's really putting in the work, and uh, and he's just the absolute best hype man for a stand-up community. But I had him do it for my special. And let me tell you, it was amazing. You know, I wanted to get him for my first special and we couldn't get it. He was busy. I forgot what it was. He was booked overseas or something. Couldn't get out of it. So anytime I can get Saif, it's it's a no-brainer, man. He's a special dude. Absolutely. I hate, I hate um, hyping him up like this. No, man. no, he sucks, but you're right. You're right. He's, he's God, good. it hurts. Um, go, go stream Muhammad in Texas on Netflix right now and go out this weekend. You will not be disappointed. Mo Ammer at Caroline's on Broadway all weekend long. Mo, thanks for always dropping by, bud. Yo, love, man. Love y'all. Big fan, man. Much love. Peace.